You can drift just about any car in Gran Turismo. Don't believe me? This is a 2100 pound Mazda with the Corvette C7 engine. Ridiculous power to weight ratio. So you gotta have the right setup, otherwise there's no way you're spinning this thing without consistently spinning out. But you get it right and you're good to go. But what if I can't? I wanna show y'all how, cause a lot of people ask for my setting sheet on some of my clip that I post. I can't send each one to all of y'all, but I am gonna start showing the setups at the end of the clips. So hopefully that's helpful. Be grateful. But why give a man a fish when you can teach him, you know what I mean? So I'm gonna show y'all what I do. And it's relatively universal, but like I said, if it's a ridiculous car like this, it's gonna be a bit different than something else like a little normal monster. But I'm not gonna get too, too detailed. Some stuff I know more about than others. Now pay attention, all right? Y'all probably know what the ride height, you want that pretty low. I don't think it necessarily matters about this one, but I keep the front end a little bit lower than the back. The anti-roll bars, I almost always keep that one one, unless it's an insane car, even crazier than this like the s14 i have then i'll maybe change it suspension wise though <laughs> i don't know much about that one but i keep the front end a bit lower than the back end in general it's relatively low you don't want a lot going on back there. with all that movement back there onto the natural frequency this is one of the important ones i usually keep it relatively low on both ends but once again the front end i keep a bit lower but this one i felt it make a big difference like because some cars have higher natural frequency from stock Obviously. Sometimes I'll just see what stock feels like and usually if it feels good I just won't change it at all. I don't know much about this one. But the next two I know a bit more about and these are very important. The camber and so I keep the camber in the back zero zero because we're working with some power so I want all that power to be on the ground. I know in real life you got less power that may be a bit different. But who cares? And again the toe matters just as much. I believe I keep the toe usually zero if I'm not mistaken. For the rear that is. But again like with the camera I keep it a bit out there with the front end. Makes sense easier if you more sideways because I've noticed that. Oh it's raining. <laughs> That's so cool. Sorry, sidetrack. But I've noticed it makes a big difference on whether or not you stay sliding sometimes because that helps a lot. Oh shit. And speaking of, skipping a little bit ahead, but brake controller is so important. If you don't have a handbrake like me, or you don't abuse the handbrake like other drifters, you gotta left foot brake all the time. You gotta make sure most of your brakes are going in the front, otherwise you're gonna get straightened up every single time. And it is so annoying. So usually, general consensus on this one is just negative two on the brake controller. The LSD, in my opinion, this completely varies to each car. Make sure you keep the brake high so you, you know you have enough brakes. I almost always, no matter what the power, I keep the throttle sensitivity at 55, very high, because I want to make it feel like I got that power. And damn it, I'm gonna feel it. I don't want it to feel soft or anything like that. And initial torque, that just depends on what car that's completely on y'all. Downforce, this is an important one. I usually like to keep it as low as possible because if you're trying to do some crazy sins, it can mess you up like nothing else, man. It's the worst. You have got to listen. There's too much downforce can make it terrible, so watch out for that. And with the transmission, you want long gear. You don't want to be redlining. That's one thing I hate. I hate a car that redlines easy. I try to fix it. Some cars are hard to fix, but Make it work. Around like a 3.8 to 4.2 final gear, depending on how many gears you got on that transmission. Only go like, cause this is only a drift field. We're not gonna be drifting 300 miles an hour, right? Why are we going so fucking fast? So only do like 300 maybe. Obviously depending on your engine, how many gears you got and all that stuff. But you don't need to be going all that fast. And like I said, you want long gears. That's what she said. I don't use a lot of the times cause I like it to be as light as humanly possible. No matter how hard it is to handle, but a battle. Sometimes it is needed if you need to just start getting used to a car. Cause that S14 that I was referring to, I had to use a ballast on that to start getting used to it. Cause it's just ridiculous. It's 2,400 pounds and like a thousand something horsepower. It is something else to handle. Okay. Thanks man. Can you see? You can't handle the truth. It's really gonna vary on the setups depending on what wheel you have. I have a Logitech, I assume most of you do, because it's just the most common one. But all of my setups are catered toward the Logitech. Most of y'all should be good on that, but you can still tweak around with what feels good. If you enjoyed the video, please leave me a like, comment some feedback. You really gotta like that guy just crashed for the video. Look at that. Not even a paid actor. And that's something. Subscribe for more. God bless you all. Hope everyone has a great day.